Hello and thanks for joining me again for some more landscape photography. Today I'm on the Snowdon Ranger Path and at the moment I'm not too far up from the parking at Llinquetlin. Now I haven't actually quite made my mind up exactly where I'm going today, so I'm just heading up the path to see where it takes me. Last weekend when I was out with Darren, we talked about heading up to the summit of Moyle Congorion. I'm heading in the right direction for that, but I might follow the ranger path itself a little bit further up Snowdon, maybe get up above Cloggy. Don't know yet, kind of depends how things are looking and how the light is. It's just nice to have a full day out all to myself uh, and I can just head off where I want to. Um, but right now it's not quite sun up yet, although it is quite bright already. Uh, but I've stopped off quite early on my walk because there was some lovely light over on the Nantla Ridge uh, where Agan runs down to Moyle Hebog. A little bit of high cloud just catching some colour, nothing too spectacular, quite subtle, but worth stopping and getting the camera out for because at the end of the day, that's the sort of light that a landscape photographer is looking for. So even though I hadn't come very far, I wasn't going to say, oh, well, I'll head on further because that's the sort of light you want to take advantage of. Not a difficult exposure by any means at all. Although I have already put a couple of filters on because down in the valley, still in very deep shadow, uh, the sun is probably up over the other side of Kapil Kirig, so the sky is quite bright. So I've got a 0.9 soft grad on, uh, but I was also able to dial in a little bit of uh, saturation into the sky using my circular polarizer. So what's going to happen now, uh, the camera will go on my clip on my uh, shoulder strap of my backpack. And I dare say that quite a lot of today's photography will be handheld. It's a lovely, clear, beautiful day for walking. Maybe not quite so good for photography. I wouldn't mind a bit of cloud, although the forecast does say there's some cloud due to bubble up later, so fingers crossed. While I was here, there's some lovely light over on the summit of Munid Mauer and, and the shadow of the peak just in front with some really nice fir trees in the foreground this side of the lake. So I've also taken a shot of that. I'm about halfway up and the wind is getting up now. There's a real chill in the air, which you'd expect on a day like this and some really icy parts on the path. So you really need to be careful. And this path has a particularly steep ridge to climb up, which is especially dangerous when there's any snow and ice. So beware of that if you come up this way. And the Ranger Path is one of the quietest of the six main routes up Snowdon. Uh, and today it's been fabulous. I've only seen about two or three other walkers. Um, I'm up about the same height as Moyle Congorion, but I've decided to head on up the main Snowdon Path today, just for a bit of a change. Um, I was on Congorion almost exactly a year ago to the day. Um, and I sat on the ridge and I told you about how I'd got my legs back after I managed to recover from diabetes. Have a look at this. I have to say that uh, throughout uh, most of this year, I may have mentioned on previous vlogs that I've, I've had a bit of a gammy leg. 
Uh, and so for most of this year, I've really been struggling and on some occasions could barely walk a few hundred meters. Um, and a few weeks ago with the change of diet and an exercise regime, I seem to have turned a corner because I was puffing and panting a bit, but actually it was pretty straightforward getting up here and I've surprised myself. Back in April, I vlogged from the summit of Moilelio, which is kind of over my shoulder as it happens. And uh, I really struggled. I nearly killed myself. And it was nothing like the climb that I've done today. So hopefully I've sorted myself out because if I thought that I wasn't going to be able to get back up into the mountains again, well, that, that would have been a pretty grim prospect, to be honest. Now, what I was looking to do today was to see whether or not there was any sort of direct comparison in how easy I found the walking. And I've got to say that over the last 12 months, I have managed to get myself an awful lot fitter because it's really cold and harsh up here, but the walking has been quite easy by comparison to how I used to find things. Anyway, that's enough nostalgia. I'm heading further up the ridge probably walk for another hour or so it's only mid-morning at the moment um, and uh, find a spot to do a bit of photography just time for a, a pit stop now I've actually been up just under the summit uh, I got up as far as Bulk Glass which is where the paths start to come together up at about 950 meters or just just a shade over 3,000 feet now up the top there there was warnings on the Met Office mountain weather for severe wind chill and they weren't lying um, I got the camera out to have a chat with you but it was absolutely impossible because the wind was running through at about 35 knots gusting to 50. Um, it was minus two but the wind chill had it down at minus 12. So it was quite eventful up there though because um, there was a helicopter rescue from the summit. Some poor unfortunate person had to be winched off and then the helicopter headed over to Uspati Gwyneth at Bangor to drop them off. So hopefully they'll be okay. Up on the top plateau there, the, the, the very highest part of the ridge, just as you run up to the summit, uh, the ground is permanently frozen up there um, from right through the winter. Um, and it's actually quite hard going. Uh, and there are slabs of ice. So where it's rained, they've then frozen solid. Uh, and it's really, really easy to come to grief. And there are loads of people that I've seen going up uh, as we're getting up towards the top where the paths converge and it's quite busy up there. Loads of people, really badly equipped. Um, people with, you know, just sort of trainers on and lightweight gear. They must be mad and they must be bloody freezing. Uh, this trip out today for me is much more about the walking than the landscape photography. Now I have taken a series of handhelds, of course. Uh, what I would say, there is a message to come out of this for you, and that's don't be afraid of using ISO to your advantage. And by that I mean rack it up as necessary to get a fast shutter speed. So you don't really want to open your aperture too wide because you're still going to want depth of field for landscape work. 
but an ISO up to say four or 500, even 640, is really not gonna do any damage in terms of introducing noise into your images. But what it will do is allow you to use fast enough shutter speeds so that handheld images aren't blurred. When I was up on the ridge, I was getting buffeted about by the wind, uh, and some of my shots have even got ISOs of up to 800 or 1,000. So I'm not worried about that at all. And if you're operating with a crop sensor or a full frame camera, you've got even less to worry about with ISO. So that's my tip from this particular video, is if you're out doing handheld stuff, use ISO to your advantage. Well, I'm nearly off the mountain now, and as I got back down the bottom of the path, I found a composition that I feel really typifies the conditions and the light you get in the mountains at this time of year. And so I've got myself down really low because I wanted to take advantage of this little gully for my foreground. And also I really like the way the light bounces off each side of it. And then in my midground, I've got all these lovely reeds catching some side light, lots of light and shadows, exactly the sort of thing I like. Then my background is the side light from the sun with wispy clouds right down in the valley between Agan and Maneth Maur as you look down towards the rivals on the Schlein Peninsula. Quite a complicated exposure though, three images to be blended together here, obviously foreground, midground and background, all at different exposure values. Um, I've got uh, quite a bright sky still, so I've actually got two 0.9 soft grads on to control that and my circular polarizer to bring out those wispy clouds, but I had to dial that right down, so that made my mid-ground and my foreground far too dark. My mid-ground, I've brought the exposure right up. I will be taking it down in post, but again, um, I needed something to work with later on. And my foreground, I could have got away with that from an exposure standpoint, but I've got stuff really close to the lens at 12 millimeters, so I wanted to make sure that my focus was spot on. Well, I've had an absolutely fabulous day out on the mountain today. You just can't beat conditions like this. Yes, it was really cold and really windy when you get up on the top ridge, but down here in the valley, it's absolutely beautiful. The other thing, of course, is that I wanted to benchmark my fitness against how I managed this particular path this time last year. And I'm happy to report that after 12 months of daily workouts and all sorts of hikes, I've got my fitness back. Getting up onto the top ridge actually really wasn't that difficult. And I know that only two or three years ago, it would have virtually killed me. So I'm really pleased and hopefully I'll be able to carry on bringing mountain photography to you for years to come. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers. Thank you.